three with the box. Who's in the box? Um, What's in the box? Welcome to the 31st episode of Bob's Basement Toy Blog here on Total Toy Recon. Um, as you may see in the title, it says Alien Day Observed. We're going to deal with the very first box today right here. It'll open up the camera a little bit. Uh, it is a alien toy, obviously. Or could you say it's a toy? I don't know. The line of toys and collectibles, what that line is now, is very gray. It's hard to, to decipher what is what. But let's open this up and we'll get to it. Now, uh, yesterday, uh, April 26th, was Alien Day, a day that was created by Fox to celebrate the Alien franchise. Um, some people think it's all about aliens and not so much the franchise anymore, so it's kind of weird how that's taken on a whole new life of its own. This was, we reviewed this on Total Toy Recon about, I'd say almost two years ago. Um, it is double boxed. So if you order anything from Eagle Moss, if you order anything from Eagle Moss, you've got a really good chance that it's not going to be damaged. Look at this thing. I really hate taking it out of the box, but I want to show it to you because it's very cool. And it was Alien Day yesterday and I didn't get it out of the box, so it's good we got it out today. So, this is Eagle Moss Hero Collectors Xenomorph. Now, this is um, from the Alien and Predator uh, figurine collection. This is an alien as it was seen in the original 1979 film directed by Ridley Scott. Now, Alien, uh, sorry, Hero Collector does really, they give you a letter of authenticity. They also give you this little book, shows you all the cool stuff that el else you can get, a little history about the film. It's in different languages, so if you're ordering it for someone overseas. Now, we're still not even there yet. I mean, it's a fabulous release. Why don't I have this out? I, I heard that question from someone out there. And it's just one of those things where my wife and I just moved. We realized we don't have a lot of bookshelves. Uh, we live in a very small place. We're just I just actually just got a notification. I got bookshelves on the way. Um, so this is something you want to put out with your books or on a movie shelf or something of that nature. We're working on that right now. Um, but we also have a little one in the house now. And it's very scary looking, and it's got very sharp edges and, at a couple points, like here on the back um, and the tail. So it's not really something you can have out with a kid who's going to be grabbing things at the moment until we get some high bookshelves. So there it is. Now this is fabulous design. It was released in 2016, or it's based on the 2016 design. We got them, I believe, about two years ago. Um, and we did a full Alien Day uh review of all these and we gave some away and then uh, the nice thing about Eagle Moss and Hero Collector is that they sent us one to give away and one to keep so I was like this is mine I'm claiming this one um, I actually got the little one too so it was a good day I'm, I'm probably the biggest alien fan in the in the office so very nice statue you get Brett's hat here after he killed him and then you have the see if I can turn around here you have the layer of shedded skin um, very neat collectible not very heavy but it's well packed as you can see um, to give you some perspective, here is, this is a 375 inch Star Wars figure, and this is 12 and a half inches tall, so this gives you an idea of how big this thing really is. I mean, it fits in my hand right there, and then I will give you, uh, this is a 6 or 7 inch, I think this is more like an 8, this is closer to 8 inch, it's an 8 inch Predator figure, so it's still really big, so... Awesome, awesome collectible. Um, something that I really want to have out. Um, just can't at the moment with a little one in the house. And we don't have any bookshelves. So now I have the awful task of hoping that's exactly how it goes back into the styrofoam. I should always take pictures of how I did that. Nope. It's always the downside of this kind of packaging. Eagle Moss Hero Collector, the name's kind of interchangeable. Um, great uh, set of collectibles that you can uh, order for yourself, order for your friends. They have different sizes. This is one of the bigger pieces, but you could get the 
the the Sulaco from Aliens as a ship. It's on a base. It's beautiful. Um, I have the Star Trek Enterprise uh, NCC 1701D. It's on a base and it looks like it's flying. It's a clear little plastic sheet at the bottom. Um, this Hero Collector really uh, really has that awesome museum like quality that you just want to put it out. But it doesn't have the enormous price tag that uh, like a sideshow collectible or a hot toy does. So it's a little right in your little. I'm gonna treat myself, but I don't feel like I'm breaking the bank uh, price range. So that's what I recommend about them, and, and they're great, and they have really cool stuff. But that's our Alien Day piece. Since Alien Day was yesterday, um, uh, my, my, uh, my friends and I, my wife and I, we did a video chat uh, on Facebook, and we had friends in California. We had friends around the block. Uh, we all sat down and watched Aliens, uh, had a couple of beers, and just laughed. And it was a good, good time because we were all sharing knowledge about what we know about the film and then analyzing you know, little things and then talking about director's cuts and expanded cuts and stuff so it was, it was a lot of fun um good way to spend uh alien days is, is to watch one of the six films um i think next year i think the wife and i are probably going to try and watch alien 3 because we did alien on friday on saturday night and then aliens on sunday night nice way to bridge the gap so uh shout out to my friend dave who's our best watcher thank you dave um hope you got to see the alien if not you can back it up after it's over we are into the second to last tub that's right this is the second to last tub as far as i can tell i'm pretty sure there may be an extra tub but we are in the second to last tub right now and i'm very excited because i'm so close to the very end so i mean we're going to do tomorrow we are going to observe masters of the universe day so we're going to be opening up uh the contents of what's inside castle grayskull here got a little dust on but I used to decorate this for Christmas every year and have it out in my living room until I moved. So there may be Christmas decorations in this guy. we got to check it out. Um, that's my original Castle Grayskull from when I was a kid. I can't believe that it survived. And then I have some He-Man figures back here, as well as uh, some Maddie Collector He-Man figures from when they re-released the line. So I do have those uh, as well. So it's going to be an interesting uh, mixture of He-Man stuff, but we're just going to focus on that uh tomorrow just for masters of the universe day and then at three o'clock tomorrow i will go live uh again but review the new masters of the universe mondo figure so it's re it's like this big it's awesome um so look for that at three o'clock and then of course i'll repost it so let's get to it so um immediately i can see a lot of things here and this is going to be weird because i'm really out of space so please forgive me if i start trying to put things around um, this right here may look like an Artisan Deluxe Home Queen sh uh, Sheet Bag, but inside are pieces to my Master Replica lightsaber. And let's see if I have it. I don't even think, yeah, the instructions are not even in here anymore. So the Master Replica lightsaber, if I would put all the pieces together, I can probably do a real makeshift one right now. So if I put all the pieces of the lightsaber together, I can actually, I have the blade, the color, and everything. It actually is three different lightsabers. I can make Luke's, I can make Vader's, and I can make um, uh, Anakin Skywalker. So I can do all three colors, red, blue, and green. And then you can change the pieces, or you can make it out yourself. So these are all the loose pieces. The lightsaber is actually upstairs in my office. But this must have been packed at the last minute as I was moving, because here are... These are Star Wars Celebration 2019 playing cards. Um, I'm not going to open the pack because uh, it, it may say the Joker here on the back, but the cards themselves are based on um, one of my favorite artists, Tom Whalen. Uh, he did the ABCs of Star Wars. And, you know, A for Admiral Akbar, Z for Constable Zubio. And he did them in his style. They did a pin collection of A through Z. And then he took similar, took his images and put them on playing cards, which he didn't even know about. So he actually gave me, he got a, a couple of comp decks, and he actually gave me a comp deck of the Celebration playing cards, which is awesome. So I don't know if I'll ever open that, but I did get the poster for my son's room of A through Z. So that was really nice. Saying hi to Teresa, who's joining us now. So this is a another oddball figure, and I... Honestly, I can't remember if I ordered him or if I picked him up. I may have special ordered him when he came out. And this is Muftak and Cab. Now, who are Muftak and Cab? They are from the original Star Wars uh, A New Hope. And they are 
aliens that you see in the background in the bar scene, the cantina bar. Um, so it's interesting because they did re-release these figures, I believe, separately, but they also made a Jedi version of Muktag. So he's a Tal, see, that's his species. So very cool uh, set. They've obviously never been out of their packs, which is a shame because they're really decent figures for Hasbro circa 1998. So I think this was a mail away. I think you actually had to just like fill out an order form and mail and mail away for it. So here is, I don't like that. There we go. Here is an original uh, Star Wars snow speeder that I picked up at a flea market. I've um, been able to restore a lot of the pieces. Um, I, I, I'm missing, a, looks like there's one that might've fallen off. I'm missing one of these little no noddles here and I'm missing the, uh, the, the, the grappling hook that shoots out, but I do have this. These actually light up and the battery cap is, it's right under here. So I think it's two C batteries, which is really a lot of juice for something that just makes like a noise. That's all it really does. All right. I am not opening it properly because it looks like it's going to break. There it goes. Yeah. Oh, two C batteries, no rust, uh, no rust whatsoever. So always a good sign. Um, it looks like it's missing some stickers too. So I think I'm going to order some stickers for it. And there is no way that that is going to stay there because there is way too much stuff in this box. Um, so this is, this is taking up a lot of space. Let's do this one. No, maybe not. Um, so, oh, and see, this is the sad part with things like this. It's such a cool toy and it got a little bubble warped up top from the heat. But this is the uh, 12 inch, probably 13 as, as tall as he is, removable Darth Vader. So it does have like a real cloth cape. It does have buttons in the back. Oh God. Push buttons to hear phrases from the movie. There's no way this can still work. It does. So it's got Vader sounds and and uh, dialogue from Anakin Skywalker. So, yeah, that's awesome. I completely forgot that I had this. This is great. And the box is really that bad. It's a little bubble warped, but considering it is from 1998, which I'm guessing a lot of the new stuff in this box is going to be from that era, it's in decent shape. More bags. So, okay, so some of you older people who watch this may recognize this as one of the long boxes. So... Back when CDs were really catching on, uh, they did this whole thing where they would put a CD in a long box like this so that it could sit up in the shelf and people could flip through it and see it. Um, I think I may have five of these, um, but the Grateful Dead actually uh, started a movement where it said this was too much cardboard and banned the box. Don't need this. This is, this is a waste of stuff. Um, so I think I have like a Joshua Tree... Uh, I think at Beauty and the Beast, the soundtrack, and then like there was one other one that I uh, that I had that I can remember. Um, so they got rid of this, but I thought the artwork was neat, and it was Indiana Jones because it also you get elongated artwork, and then you have these extra pictures and stuff from the movie, which is also funny that it was released by Warner Brothers Music, even though it's a Paramount movie owned by Lucasfilm. Go figure that one out. Um, so this was neat. Um, then I kept this. I'm glad I did because you don't see these anymore. Um, uh, I had a U2 album, it was Octung Baby, that actually came tall like this with plastic uh, holders down the side, and then you folded it all up. They don't release it like that. And it, it's funny because they just got to a point where they realized this was too much money, and they just shrunk wrap everything, and then they would put it in those little lock boxes. So, interesting that I still have that, but I think it's neat. We'll cut through these three really, really quick. So, these. this has been a interesting project of mine that is not yours this is yours so oh so all right now this is my original x-wing uh from when i was a kid so this was the actually the second x-wing that they released 
and it was not bad. It has battle damage that you had to put over your uh, you had to put over your wings. Um, it's a, and missing a sticker here on this side, but otherwise it's in decent shape. Um, it does not have the little thing. This was my original X-wing. Found it, got all the pieces back together, put it together. This is an X-wing that I bought at a yard sale. That was obviously little kids, as you can see. Hasbro just did a quick repaint, resculpt. Uh, not even re-sculpt, re-release of, re of the mold and everything with slightly different colors and variations. So I picked this up at a yard sale because I think I got it for like a buck. And I was like, I can put the pieces back on there and it's in decent shape. We have seen one in one of the boxes that we did. We do, I do have it still in the box. But when I was in college, and this is really kind of mean for me to say, but my the jerkiest roommate I had in college my first year said, hey, uh, I see you like Star Wars. I have my old X-Wing. Do you want it? And I said, well, yeah, of course. So he gave me his original X-Wing. Um, he actually had this piece, which was amazing. Uh, but I actually went and found, uh, I had extra ones of these because I've been collecting them at yard sales and flea markets. Uh, the battery does not work. I believe it is a bit cruddy. But the condition of it is really, really good um, considering and then, even then, you can see the difference here. This is the original X-Wing, but the, the lines on the wings is three. So, one, two, three, four. So, it, technically, it would be five. Uh, there's five lines there to be read five, because that's who Luke was. However, when they re-released it, they actually put five red lines on there. So, if you count it... That way, there's five lines, but you count it as the red lines, it's five. And if you look at the original one with the original stickers, you can see the battery acid came through here a little bit. Um, it, it has the, the red, white, and lines to mean five. So it's a little bit different, but uh, straighten this out with a little um, uh, hot hair dryer should be fine. But otherwise, it's in great shape. It really is a nice piece, and I'm glad that I have it. And the roommate was a jerk, um, but this was a really nice thing that he did get for me. But that was at the beginning of the semester. <laughs> <laughs> See, every toy has a story. It's just a matter of, do you really want to reveal sometimes the story behind the toy? Um, if I had a counter, I wish I could pop, have a counter pop up on screen. Looks like he's been out of the pack. Has he been out of the pack? Original tape. Yep. So this is another do-back. We may be at seven or eight do-backs at this point. This one was actually out of the box, I can tell, because the guy's a little loose in there, and then the, the tape's been open. But this is another great uh, special edition re-release of the Dewback. Um, just a new sculpt of it and everything. Really cool toy. Um, here is the original Jabba the Hutt throne. Um, here's Salacious Crumb and pieces. So we'll put this to the side and see how much more Jabba surfaces. Actually, we're not going to have to wait because there's the original Jabba the Hutt. A fantastic toy by Kenner. I mean, really uh, likeness, color scheme. He's got a great rubber head. Now, this is hard plastic all the way down to here, but the arms are rubber, the head's rubber. Um, let's put them together here. So this was a neat toy for me. Uh, it wasn't something that I got when they originally came out. They were a tad on the pricier side. Not really something that my parents would have bought me. But the toy itself uh, was one of the last things released by Hasbro. So uh, my mother worked for a department store, and she actually became the manager of the toy department. And uh, when she got transferred to a new store, uh, they had a big like opening day sale. All this Star Wars inventory that they had was dirt, dirt cheap. So, like ten cents a figure or something like that. They had tons of stormtroopers and guys that you know, like Bid Fortuna. Um, so my dad took us into see her, and my dad was like, "Plus her discount and all this stuff, you can play with these Star Wars toys." So it was neat because you didn't think of it at the time. I was really into GI Joe, but now the fact that I actually have an original Kenner. Jabba the Hutt uh, playset is amazing. We, we saw Jabba, like, I think over the weekend, or the, not over the weekend, it was Thursday or Friday. So we actually had that, and then it was cool because we actually um, were able to, 
I think we gave a couple out as Christmas gifts, and it was neat. It's just a cool, cool toy, and uh, it has been, you know, redone several times, but never to this level um, of, of awesomeness that they did it back in the original day. So now I'm at the weird impasse of how much space I'm going to have for the rest of the stuff in this box, because there's still a lot, of, a lot of stuff in here. Shout out to my cousin Aaron, who's watching. I hope you're doing fine down in Westchester. Lots of stuff. Aaron, you missed it. I had a Nabu uh, Starfighter on here, and I thought of you because I know I gave you one for Christmas one year. We have, uh, here we have an original, uh, is it a Taco Bell? or uh, This is one of the original Pepsi uh, bottle tops that they had for the uh, episode one. So here is Yoda. I do have at my desk at the actual office, um, he's still there, I have Newt Gunray from episode one. He actually sits on my desk. He's a, the whole cup and everything. Um, wow. Okay. Didn't expect to go to some of these places today because I didn't actually know what was in the last tub. But, so, the nice thing is that as, as I've been doing this, I had a knife here, but I don't know where it went. Wow. That knife would really come in handy right now. The tape is like a hard shell around it. Yeah. Don't know where it's going. Here we go. Actually, I actually don't know if I can get it out of here. I know what it is I based on the boots and the lightsaber that just slid out. So... There's a lot of original Kenner stuff in here I did not expect to see today. Um, I figured it was being the last stuff. So, I'm going to need some, uh, I'm going to need a scissors or something. To, there it is. To cut him out. Anybody else nervous? Because I'm nervous. <laughs> The tape is like a hard, hard glue. Not on it, just in general. Wow. Okay, here we go. In a Suncoast video bag of, it, of all things. So here is the original Kenner 12-inch Darth Vader. Now this was mine when I was a kid. So this has survived all this time. And in my own little kid brain, uh, I actually stuck a Darth Vader name tag on his uh, arm right there um, so that I would you know, never forget who he was. I don't know how I could forget. But this is, yeah, this is as awesome as toys get when I was a kid. The lightsaber, unfortunately, became lodged in my parents' couch and then was broken. I'm going to blame my brother on that. It seems like something that he would do. Um, so this is the original saber. However, it is a bit short. So it is the original piece that I had. You know, I do like it the way it is. I actually folded the cape under his arms. But what I got excited was because now, so this is 1979, 1978, 1980, something like that, in that era. And then this is 1998. So there's the difference between the two. And I'll take this any day over the new one. So this is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I think this is cool. But... This is, this is it right here. This is all Star Wars right here. So, yeah, that's, yeah. He needs to go out, like, permanently. And then maybe even in a case, because he's just beyond cool. I mean, you see those at, like, flea markets and yard sales and stuff. So, oh, here's the snow speeder piece that I was missing. I have a lot of these doll cases, these doll holders. So here is the original Boba Fett 12 inch. Um, so I, as you can see, I don't have all the pieces. I think the gun is, yep. Here's his gun. So this actually goes over his arm like that. Um, he did unfortunately have an accident and his arm broke. So I glued it permanently in place so that uh, at least, you know, when he's there, it looks halfway decent. But 
he does he, he is really beat up. This was a great this was a great toy because he did have the Wookiee scalps and he had a little flag but lost that. It, actually, you had a rocket that you could shoot out of the back here as a spring, and then it had a little rope that you could tie it. So pretty much very much in, intact. And considering he's from 1980, he's in decent shape. His legs are a little weak, but he's my original. So it's I, I think it's funny that if you see Star Wars collectors and they do documentaries on them like they do on Netflix and the toys that made us, they have the restored one the one that they went out and they bought they you know they got something like this at a, at a toy show it's in better shape than the one they have and then yet they'll go and they'll show you like oh but that's my original and it'll look chewed and played with and dirty and broken but that's my original so that's the one that actually means something that's the one that never leaves the house and then there's the one that was i got it for collector's sake i got it because i needed mine restored mine was broken it was stolen but that's my original if I still have it, you know, so it's, it's neat. It's like I have the Falcon over there. It really needs to be restored and cleaned up, but I'll never get rid of it because no matter what, that's the Falcon, uh, my Falcon. Um, all right, let's kill some really quick things here really fast. The original Return of the Jedi uh, thermos. Uh, my mom sold both of the Return of the Jedi lunch boxes that my brother and I had. Uh, at a yard sale, but for some reason these did not get in there. So somewhere out there, there's you know maybe I'll find another lunchbox one day from Return of the Jedi, and I actually have the harder part to find, which is the thermos. Quick, uh, God, I hope there's no candy in them. Three Star Wars Pezzes. This makes four now. I think that we found out of the box and one in the pack. So three Star Wars Pezzes. I'm not sure what that... Oh, I know what that is. That's cool. Um, okay, so we've had some Phantom Menace uh, play sets. And we've been looking for them because we found their instructions. But we just found... This is part of the Darth Maul, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, play set where you can do the, the different things where they're fighting. And they had these little things. You spin the figures and stuff. So this is one piece of that. Uh, like I said, I did find the instructions. So we are closer to putting that back together and i'm guessing family toy warehouse i bet you they're not in business anymore so i believe that they were up in uh yep so here's all the parts to that play set we got the bridge we've got a doorway to something i don't even know if the doorway goes to that it may go to another play set um but play sets are rare and hard to find um, they don't really do them as much anymore. Um, we've had two or three from that era. Oh, God. Don't, please don't fall. Um, we've had two or three from that era that really need to be uh, restored and put back together, which is one of the things that I've been doing on the show, and I talked about the, the, the show that I've been talking about, is I'm actually able to find these pieces I set them aside, and then I work them back in together. And uh, last, uh, maybe two weeks ago, my wife and I had Star Wars figures all over the coffee table, and we were putting them in bags, matching up their weapons, and saying, well, this doesn't go with anybody here in this collection. We need to put that aside. Um, who, who's this? Oh, nice. So, I love, I love too, when I can correct myself. I got the, I had the uh, Walmart exclusive Job of the Hut playset, who came with Ula. Uh, the exotic dancer. Well, here's the other Ula from 1998. So there was an earlier release of Ula who came with Salacious Crumb, Jabba's little monkey guy. Um, he has a name, right? He does not have a name. I, he's got a name now. He was. They just. They showed him in the um, in the Mandalorian. People were grilling them or patting them on a spit. So this is a very cool figure. Where I look this up. This has never been opened. So here's two very cool oddball figures that I know I had to mail away for. Um, yeah, that's just, that's awesome to get Ula. I actually saw her at Star Wars Celebration Europe, 20, 12, 20, 2012, 2013, maybe even sooner than that, maybe 2015, uh, looks exactly the same. Like she's a dancer. So she's in fantastic shape. Um, very cool. Yeah. There's two really awesome sets. I mean, just the whole, look at the whole like the color scheme, everything about this this wave of Power of the Force figures, just amazing. So to actually find Ula in the pack like that, 
Um, I do say this, and I do do it for the majority of the oddball and the cooler things. Um, I do post pictures of a lot of this stuff on our Instagram afterwards. So if you want to see, I'll put pictures both sides of those really cool things. Uh, this was the 12-inch Jawa that went with the this line of toys for the Boba Fett. Uh, you can see the height difference right here. But his eyes do have like a little bit of a sparkle to them. Uh, he did have a bandolier and a gun, but this was my brother's. So that means it's gone. Um, it would be neat, though, to take this robe and see if it would fit on a six-inch figure and how good it would look because there's... This is Lord Zed from the uh, Power Rangers. He's about the same size as most Star Wars Black Series figures are, the six-inch line. So that robe may be actually perfect. So I may have to put that robe on a Jedi and see how good it looks. Um, Ruby's Jedi hair. Clip on your ears for a Halloween costume. Oh, these are neat. Uh, Star Wars stickers. These were like a birthday thing. This is the Hasbro toy guide for the Phantom Menace. So this must have come in some of the Star Wars boxes that I got. They don't really do this anymore. Uh, with the internet being the way it is, you can always look it up. But it does show you everybody who's in the toy line who you can get. Um, you know, does the rocket launch? Does it fives noises? So this is neat. I take, I've been keeping these, been finding a lot of these lately. Um, but we'll post pictures of that as well on Instagram. Um, so I almost bought this the other day. I saw this. This is the Play for Power card game uh, from Parker Brothers. I don't think I've ever played this, and I'll bet you that every card is in here. So I should probably sit down with the wife, and we should probably five games in one. Seven to four players, number of players, I'm sorry, age of seven to four, number one, a deck of 36 playing cards, a deck of 45 playing cards, and four guide cards. 15 to 30 minute games, there are five games in all. So definitely going to look into that, see, we've got the time to figure it out. Um, here is the original Darth Vader Play-Doh mold. You put the Play-Doh in there, and it makes a little Darth Vader. First or second episode we had of the show, um... We found, I think it was C-3PO, no, I'm sorry, it was Princess Leia, who came with R2-D2, and we had um, an X-Wing. So, yeah, just a piece of plastic. This isn't even recyclables logos on it, that's how old it is. Um, but my son could make Darth Vader in Play-Doh if he wanted to. I always liked that. I always thought that was a really cool thing. All right, so here we got... Now... These are Wampas from The Empire Strikes Back. Pretty sure that this one is my original Wampa. So the cool thing about this was his arm, actually, is the rubber band still in there? His arm would whack over guys. This one's better. Would whack over guys. So you could do the Tauntaun, you could do Luke, and then you could have him uh, knock people over. I think it's cool, too, because it's the original look of the Wampa. Yes, of the Wampa, uh, pre-special edition. Then they changed it. They made it look more ferocious. Um, so this is a little bit more of what the original one looked. This is just a giant figure. And that's what's cool about this. Like, uh, where'd Grandma Tarkin go? So this is just a this is just a big figure, but this was like an extra price point. So here's the here's a 375 figure next to him. Really shows it how big he is. Um, the plastic is starting to yellow, so I don't know if I wash him. Uh, will he get better? So there's lots of... Uh, online sites that will say you could basically Google how do I unyellow my Wampa and it will come up. Now this one, and as I said, all toys have stories. Yeah, this is him. So uh, my parents had moved us to Harrisburg, and uh, we were playing. Uh, we we're playing in this kid's backyard one day, and we ran across this other kid's yard, and we had no idea who he was, but we were just running from tree line to tree line. And I saw this wampa, like, buried in the sand, and it was like nobody lived at the house. It was, it was empty. It was just, it, there was even a for sale sign out front. And I saw this wampa sitting in the sand, and it just looked abandoned. So I picked it up and took it with me. And it still has sand in it, because it was in the sandbox. Um, so I kind of rescued him. I do have 
other rescue you know toys where you find them at yard sales and flea markets but this one was found in a, a house that was for sale there was nobody living there so i didn't steal it and it was just there stuck in a sandbox so i was like oh well i'm gonna take it with me but look how yellow he is compared to i mean it's actually not that different so it must be something with the plastic and if you think about it too even though it's an all like snowy white creature there is a bit of yellowness to just the sun burning thing. So you could say maybe actually he's just bigger in the snow. <laughs> mm. All right. So, ow. Wow. Here's actually the original rocket to Boba Fett's thing. Can't believe I still have that. Fits in his thing, too. Ah, uh, here's the instructions to the power card game. And not bad shape considering. So this was the first time you could get Uncle Owen as an action figure. Um, I think they made him again later. I'd have to double check to be sure. But they did make Aunt Beru as a standalone figure with a droid. And we did, I believe we did show her earlier in the series. So this was the, the uh, purchase of the droids. The C-3PO is pretty good. But thankfully they're all wired into position uh so they're not going to fall out of that spot um but this was the only way you could get uncle owen so it was a figure i must i had to have because they never made him as an original figure another one of these great cinema three pack things that just i they probably have cases for those now another jedi uh hair braid c-3po in the pez ah nope here's princess leia's uh Cruddiness. Got some old. Yeah, I'm gonna wash this out. But you can make Princess Leia and R2D2 as Play Doh characters, so that's cool. I'm gonna wash that out. Then, this was like pre Power of the Force, the return. Now, Kenner had made. This was 1994. Um, Kenner had made metal. Um, die cast figures for Star Wars to see if people were still interested and it may be one of the last things I think that Kenner would have released from Star Wars before they let the licensing uh, lapse so there's a baseball card and you get C-3PO um, here's a stormtrooper and then here's Luke I'm pretty sure that I, I may have a Darth Vader but you're supposed to like the bases could connect and you can put them together there may be more of these I don't know but they're very rare odd and uh they were the, the precursor of the re-release of all the new toys at least i think they were 94 it have to be so ugh. more job of the huts you know a character that big you think you wouldn't have like you'd have one or two definitive jabas and that would be it so this is not the worst job of the hut ever but that eh, it's the worst job of the hut ever so this is which means Jabba Glob is over in there. So this is the uh, the re-release of Jabba the Hutt from the special edition. So the, the CGI-ness of this is really, really poor. And they did update it in subsequent releases on DVD and Blu-ray of what Jabba looked like. But this was from the, the cut scene that they put back in. It had to do some you know special effects trickery to get it to work. Uh, I know it's opened. Yeah, I had this out. I don't think I had that out. And then, oh, here's something you don't see every day. Here's just the head of Luke Skywalker. Just the head. And he still has his neck piece. So I think I have a Luke that's missing his head. Maybe my original Luke. I don't know where I found this. It's not his because his piece is broken off. So we should stick that, we'll stick that here in these drawers that have all these loose oddball pieces. And then, oh, this one's cool. So this is, if you're world building and you're doing like Tatooine, you kind of need this. Uh, one of the things that they re-released for the special edition, well, they re-released, they put into the special edition was they created this creature called the Ronto, which is something that the Jawas ride. Um, just a big monster toy, um, just a creature, you know, it's got a, an exclusive Jawa with it. It's got a little, like, saddle for him to ride on. Just a really cool toy. Um... Just they added more things to the world. They made it more world building. So if you're going to do Tatooine, you really need a Ronto. 
And the last in a Walmart bag. This is it. Last bag for this tub. But here are pieces to the Max Rebo band. Now this is Max and Dota. Now Dota is actually a character that they added for the special edition in Return of the Jedi. So that's one set. Here is uh, Barraquin Dan and Droopy McCool. So you're getting an original member of, of the, the Max Rebo band and you're getting one of the new characters that they added for the special edition, which was smart because it made you have to buy three sets of these bad boys. So here's Snice Noodles and uh, Yova, uh, Yo Wowza. So these are the three favorites. Not my favorite addition to the, the special editions, but I love the figures. I think the aliens are great. Not a fan of this uh, Snice Noodles though. I do have an original, so I'd probably take her out or put her in a background somewhere. But I never had the Rebo band as a kid so to actually get Droopy McCool, um, Max Rebo, and Snice Noodles over again, um, or for the first time, was great. They actually came in a three-pack. You got Droopy McCool, Max Rebo, and Snice Noodles in a three-pack, and it was something I never got. So it was an obsession. I mean, look at that keyboard. Uh, you got to have that. <laughs> it's just it's a keyboard in Star Wars. Um, so that was one of the really cool things that we I had to have. Um, and I, I would love to know what these cost, because I'll bet you these were like, there's no receipt. I wonder if these were like $15.99 or 19 I don't think they were $19.99. But the price point had to be very similar, because you had to get all three, you had to get all three of these pairs. So you have to wonder, like, how much plastic is here in relation to this one, where if this is the same price, you're getting a lot more plastic than you are over here. Which is a big thing with me right now on why can some figures cost twenty dollars and they're this big it's you know it's the thing and then you get you know yoda for 19.99 and he's like this big and comes with nothing so same company same size of figure but the price is very different and what you're getting for your money is are you paying for the name yoda over like the thing from from ben grimm's fantastic four so it's it's a weird thing so Wrap this up. Big surprises today where I did not expect to see this guy because I totally forgot I even had him, which is one of the awesome things that I love. But to see this old friend again made the whole thing, ripping this basement apart, completely worth it. So I'd have to say, seeing this old guy, um, this was one of my favorite toys as a kid. Um, absolutely. I, I never had Luke. I had Obi-Wan. My brother had Han. Um, we have Chewbacca. Never had Luke, um, but had Vader. Never had Princess Leia either, but had Obi-Wan and C-3PO. Never had R2-D2, um, but we had a Jawa and Boba Fett. So we had some of the cool ones. So my parents and my grandparents really did come through with some really cool stuff for me and my brother at Christmas time. Wish I sold the box for that thing. Um, the X-Wings are great. Having Jabba complete, awesome. And then finding this old card game with the instructions still, that's going to be fun. So this is Bob's Basement Toy Block tomorrow. Masters of the Universe Day, we're going to do two shows, we're going to unbox that, and then at 3 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, we will be going in and looking at uh, the new Mondo Masters of the Universe He-Man figure. Um, and then on Wednesday, we may be doing our very, very last tub. Um, we're going to maybe call it that, and that will be the end of the show. But I think we're going to do a live on Thursday of an unboxing of Transformers toys. Brand new. New stuff. So this is Bob from Toys Toy Recon. Thank you for tuning in. Bit longer than uh, I expected, but there's a lot of stuff in this tub and getting that alien, wherever he went, out of the box was a lot harder than I thought it would be. So thank you for tuning in. Be safe out there. Don't go out unless you have to. And uh, if, you're, if you are toy hunting, make sure that you're doing it because you actually need to go to Walmart or Target and you're just swinging by because you need a break from the normal. Don't, don't go out looking for toys on days like this. Have a good afternoon.